Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on the vocal folds mucosal wave, the essential first step in converting aerodynamic energy into acoustic vibrations. Voice production is essentially an energy conversion process in which the aerodynamics energy supplied by the pressure of the air driven out of the lungs is uh, converted at the glottic level into a, an acoustic energy by the myoelasticity of the vocal fold tissues. This myoelasticity drives the oscillation of the vocal folds, which essentially uh, modulates the continuous air stream into a series like a train of air puffs with a certain rate that is the fundamental frequency of the glottic signals. And this is the essential first part in the voice production. We are watching here the surface mucosal wave of the adducted vocal fold bodies. Note that there is a phase difference between the superior and the inferior parts of the vocal fold cover, the medial surface of the vocal cords that meets in the midline, and that the surface wave propagates from inferior to superior. The inferior part of the vocal folds leads not only during the conversion of the vocal cords uh, closer together in the midline, but also during diversion of the midline as well. Now, a closer look at what happens during a single cycle of oscillation of the vocal folds. Starting with the first frame here, we'll slow down the uh, oscillation cycle into eight frames, starting with the first frame here, T1, in which the vocal folds are barely in touch, closing up the uh, glottic canal. There is a build-up of pressure in the subglottic area because the air cannot escape through the glottic canal. This happens later when the pressure exceeds a certain critical amount and air uh, through the entry into the glottic canal and the exit escapes into the supraglottic tract. Notice that in these two frames in T2 and T3, you still have the geometry of the glottic canal, the configuration of the canal in the coronal plane, like a conversion uh, configuration. The surface area of the entry into the glottic canal is larger than the surface area of the exit of the glottic canal, of the exit of air through the glottic canal. This is crucial in maintaining a self-driven oscillation of the vocal folds as we shall see later. Once the maximum lateral displacement of the adducted medial ends of the vocal folds is reached, the lower margin of the vocal folds recoils and starts to move medially, while the upper end is still lagging behind. So the direction of the movement of the lower end here is different from the direction of the movement of the upper end in T5. Now in T6, the lagging upper end of the vocal folds start to change direction of movement and now moves medially together with its lower end, which has now reached the midline in T7 and meets the opposite lower end of the other vocal fold, closing up the glottic canal. In both T6 and T7, the glottic canal configuration is divergent, with a smaller A1 entry into the canal, then exit from the canal. This is again an important in maintaining the self-driven oscillation of the vocal folds. 
towards the end of the oscillation cycle in T8, the upper ends of the vocal folds are about to reach the uh, midline to close up the glottic canal completely. And this marks the end of the oscillation cycle. But once this is achieved, the pressure in the subglottic area would have now reached the critical level to force the glottis open to start the new cycle of oscillation. Because of the difference in the pace between the inferior and the superior parts of the surface of the medial ends of the adducted vocal fold, when the vocal folds start to open up at the inferior part, it's still closed and maintain closure of the glottis at the upper part. The difference in the pace between the inferior and the superior parts of the surface of the adducted vocal folds is termed vertical phase difference. The vertical phase difference of the vocal folds a mucosal wave. And being a non-zero value, it provides asymmetry in the intraglottic air pressure. This is essential for maintaining self-driven oscillation. The phase difference is in turn affected by the vertical thickness of the medial ends of the vocal folds and also by the medial bulge of the inferior uh, part of the medial uh, adducted vocal folds. A similar phase difference is also noted during the conversion and the diversion of the medial ends of the surface of the adducted vocal folds. Much like the phase difference between the superior and the inferior parts of the surface of the medial parts of the vocal folds, the anterior parts of the vocal folds also lead the posterior parts during conversion and diversion, giving rise to what can be seen as a zipper-like closure and opening of the glottic canal. The myoelastic aerodynamic theory of voice production describes the interaction of the aerodynamic forces with the mechanical properties of the vocal fold tissues and geometry. The way the vocal fold can maintain the self-driven oscillation will be discussed in the following presentation, when we shall go through three possible mechanisms including the Bernoulli effect, the effect of alternating conversions and diversions of the glottis, and the effect of the inertive properties of the supraglottic air column. By this, we end this presentation on the vocal fold mucosal wave. Assalamu alaikum.